Pookie Lou, another wonderful Russell Roney for me and for you. We got one half of the WF Tag Team Champions back with us. The Outsider, Will Carroll. How we feeling, buddy? Good. How's my hair look? How's my hair look? Great as always. Great as always. Oh, I love having you. You're a fun guy. What I got a, I got a new scar. I got a new scar there since I was here last. Damn. Well, yeah. You, how'd you get that? Uh, I was at the Negative Outlook in Pittsburgh, and uh, probably, yep. And we were uh, at a Skull Fest, and this dude just uh, went uh, went ham with the light tube, I guess. You know, and next thing I know, I was uh, bleeding kind of irregularly, Ooh. a lot, and then um, <laughs> then I felt kind of dizzy. <laughs> <laughs> then I went home and took a nap. I went to my friend's home and took a nap. And I was supposed to go to more like music shows, and I was like, I don't feel up to it. I, <laughs> I think I'm down for the evening. But then I went to a a tiki bar in Pittsburgh, and uh, tiki drinks are really uh, sugary and very uh, alcoholic, you know. Good. So I had a maybe a concussion, and I definitely had lost a lot of blood earlier in the day, and uh, and I was still hungover from the night before. So it was really a recipe for a, a disaster, really. That sounds like a good time. If he's in Pittsburgh, I yeah. thought you're talking about evil ways. Evil? What did I say? You said negative outlook, which is no. an hour down the road. You that's know. not. Yeah, no, yeah. That's what I meant to say. Yes. That hey, that's what happens when you work everywhere. You've been everywhere since the last episode. What the hell you been up to, Will? That's a, that's a loaded question. We could be here all day, but give me some highlights. Uh, going to Texas was definitely a highlight. Um, went down to finally meet uh, Avon and DB down in Texas. I flew into uh, Dallas, and uh, we worked a show in Armorillo. Uh, got to see the Terry Funk mural. Nice. It was a street fight match against uh, two uh, two cop guys, uh -oh. which you know we love that. You know, any whenever they're like, uh, we don't have anywhere anyone for you to fight. I'm always like. We'll put like cop outfits on like the students. You know what I mean? Like there you go. it's that it's that easy. You know what I mean? So we uh we uh dressed up two of the younger guys as cops, and yeah. uh and beat them up. And um, what was uh scary though? Texas is a is scary. Have you ever been to Texas? Hell no. Tell me about. Yeah, it. it's kind of a scary. It's it's a different. It's a very different place, and it can be a very uh scary place um everybody has a uh, guns right that's what i hear which is a little but they're not like they're just like on their hip you know what i mean <laughs> so everywhere you go there's everyone's got a gun right. so um we are, are beating up these cop guys mm -hmm. these cop wrestlers and this guy stands up in the audience and he looks just like if you were going to draw a cartoon of like a wild west sheriff that's mm -hmm. what this guy looked like oh, shit. big mustache dude was like six foot seven older guy but like type of guy you don't fuck with right and he had a gun on his leg like the size of my arm <laughs> and he sees as soon as we start beating up the cops he was like pissed so i'm guessing maybe he was like a former i don't know cop or who fucking knows just had that cop vibe right and he there's no guardrail either and he grabs the bottom rope of the ring he's shaking the fucking rope and I am like, oh, fuck, I better stay the fuck away from this guy. But my guys are like, get in the fucking ring, old man. <laughs> and I'm just like, oh, my God, no, this is how I'm going to die. Or this is this is where I die. This is this is it. This is uh, no, I don't want to mess with this guy. And after our match, I kind of like hit in the back because I didn't want to want to see this fucking dude. You know what I mean? Yeah, right. So, I mean, uh, yeah, everybody's got a gun. We, um, uh, me and Avon, uh, on our way from Dallas to Amarillo, and Texas is as big as uh, they tell you it is. It's very big. Right. And uh, we were driving from Dallas to Amarillo, which I feel like was like a seven-hour drive or something crazy like that. And, um, and that's just like the tip right-hand side of Texas. That's not even going across texas okay. so um he goes we're gonna stop for dinner at this um old luchador house i'm friends with okay and, I, and i'm like oh hell yeah that's cool and um we we pull up at this guy's house and he he's real nice and he's talking about like eric bischoff like he knows him 
Okay. He's talking about like guys from WCW, like he knows them. And I go, were you in uh, WCW? And he goes, yeah, I was a Viano five. Oh, okay, nice. <laughs> and I go, oh, that's really cool. So now I got like all these questions. And if you remember, there was an episode I think of Thunder, where uh, Raven and uh, Canyon. Uh, we're fighting the Vianos and they like pr broke one of their necks or something. Okay. I think I and that. they had to like cart them out, like in an ambulance and like all that, like dude was fucked up. <laughs> so I, go, I go, are you the, are you the Viano that a uh, Raven uh, broke his neck? He goes, no, like that was Dave. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, yeah. Scotty and uh, Chris were drunk. They were being assholes that night. But yeah, I, I was there that night. <laughs> How cool. So, yeah, he was a WCW luchador, and uh, I guess he played a couple different uh, WCW luchador guys, this guy. But um, anyways, he took us out to dinner. He took us uh, to an Applebee's, and he goes, Avon, are you are you packing heat? And Avon goes, no, I left my, my gun at home. And uh, then I see Viano 5 load up a pistol okay. and put it in his pocket. <laughs> And we go to like the Applebee's in like this like nice part of town. <laughs> Who the fuck is gonna fuck with three fucking wrestlers in a fucking Applebee's? You know what I mean? That you'd have to like shoot them. You know what I mean? Like, what the fuck do you think is gonna fuck? Like that's Texas, you know? Like, I I'm not used to that type of behavior, you know? No, me neither. I'm not a gun <laughs> dude. I've been scared. To yeah, death. yeah. No, I was just kind of like, okay, this is different. <laughs> All right. Okay. Yeah. Very cool. All right. Whatever. Sounds like you had um, quite the Texas Texas adventure. I I think I had some of the best food I ever had in my entire life down there. And, uh, oh yeah. Texas. Yeah. Everything I ate was really good. Um, had barbecue once. Had a lot of Mexican food. Uh, I think I ate some of the best food I ever had in my entire life down uh, down there. So I'd like to get back to Texas again. Cooking it up down there in Texas. Yeah, I liked it a lot down there. Uh, Avon and I were planning to, uh, me flying to Dallas, and we would uh, drive to Mexico or fly to Mexico from there. Because every he works like Mexico like twice a year. Really? So kind of my next goal is to get down to Mexico with him. Yeah. I hear it's super dangerous. Well, he's a, a Mexican. Okay. All right. So, okay. All right. I'm just, I, I said my piece. I hear it's dangerous. You do it. Yeah, I, that's all right. But I, he, I'll have a guy with me that uh, knows the lay of the land. An insider with the outsider. Exactly. So I, hopefully the danger will be uh, diminished. Yeah, minimum danger. Minimum danger. Well, I don't want it to be like completely non-dangerous. Yeah, I don't want you getting shot or kidnapped though, is what I'm saying. Fair. No, you're right. I Got the plate to the head. All right, cool. Always fun. Always a good time. Getting kidnapped and, you know, whatever they do to the people they kidnap. Nah. Shanghai. They get Shanghai. That's what happens. <laughs> no, I'm thinking of something else. Um, I think I'll be all right. <laughs> <laughs> I, I hear the food is great. I don't know. No doubt, man. What, what are yeah. you seeing while you're out there on the road? You're popping up at all these new feds. What's going on out there, man? Every everywhere. What do you want? What's what's some similarities, some differences? What do you see? The good, bad, and the ugly. Okay, I okay, see right. a lot of companies have a really good first show. Okay. And then every show after that sucks. Really. And then they wonder why. I've seen that a lot. <laughs> well, what do you think? Why is why is it happening? I think there's a lot of hype and a lot of energy that goes into a first show. Okay. And then. It's hard to keep up with that energy and uh, hype in a second, third, fourth, fifth show. Okay. Um, running a wrestling show, I see a lot of people uh, losing a lot of money right now. Um, I see a lot of promoters uh, putting a lot of eggs in one basket and uh, then uh, realizing, hey, holy fuck, I'm uh, not making any money and I'm losing money. You know what I mean? Okay. I see a lot of that. Um, what's the solution to that problem? I'm not really sure. I'm glad that I'm not on the uh, production side anymore because 75% uh, of the shows that I'm on, I feel like the promoter is not profiting. You know what I mean? Wow. Um, so I'm seeing that a lot. But it's not just wrestling. Um, 
I also work in uh, my my during the week. I work with a guy that sells antique motorcycle parts, mm -hmm. and all of sales are down. I work with a guy that sells uh, collectible toys. All of his sales are down, so it's just not a lot of money. Uh, people aren't spending a lot of money right now. People probably don't have the money, man. That's what I'm. That's what I'm yeah. seeing. So I'm definitely seeing that. So I'm seeing a lot of uh, people taking a lot of chances and not uh, getting the return that they'd like. And I mean, I don't think that they're really necessarily even doing anything wrong. Right on. I but it's a hard time to book a show. I can I can tell you that. Right. In my neck of the woods, in West Virginia, a lot of promotions are getting paid shows. So they're having free shows, and those are bringing in fans. Paid uh, shows as in, like, state fair type state situations? State paying for the shows. Sure. Uh, big deal with Harrison County. They're paying for the shows now, you know, for the parks and stuff. Sure. So, yeah, that's happening around here. It'd be nice if it happened for some of the good ones up that way, you know? Yeah, but they're never going to, like, uh, sponsor, like, a show where, like, hardcore's, like, using a cheese grater in someone's eye. You're you know what I mean? Holding. Well, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's true. <laughs> that's true. Those are, those are fan. And I do, uh, I do family-friendly shows. Like, where, where I won the tag team belt, that's, like, a, that's, like, a family-friendly show. That's what I thought. Um, I thought you worked some, some quote unquote normal place. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no, I do. I do. Um I do. Uh the one I did last uh Friday in Canada, that was a all ages show. Um Canada. What the hell are you doing up in Canada, man? Canada's actually not that far from me. Really? I'm 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 in but it's uh Buffalo's the border of uh Niagara Falls there. So it's only about two and a half two hours and forty minutes to get to uh where the show was Brampton, Ontario. Okay. So it wasn't too bad. As long as you don't have any trouble at the border, it's not so bad. Um, but yeah, I during the month of October, mm -hmm. I made it out to Portland. I came home. I won a tag team championship belt. I had a week off. And then I had another tag team matchup in Canada. So I had two matches myself, which is, that's abnormal. Yeah. Because I, I don't, I'm not, I'm not really a wrestler, but. I've fallen into a couple of matches, and I got another one in November. So I've been going to the wrestling school though, so I am minimally in training. Got you. Hey, so good on you. Good on you. Yeah, hey, that yeah, Portland yeah. show had a lot of buzz. Tell me about how, how. What was it like? It was a lot. Of, that's probably one of the best shows I've been on in a long time. Really? Uh, yeah. Um, everyone on the roster, the roster was sick. Um. That was probably one of the bigger, biggest crowds I've worked in a while. What was it? Pacific uh, Death? What was it called? Yep. No, uh, Pacific North Death. Pacific North Death. There we go. And, um, yeah, the crowd was huge. The crowd was fucking hot. They'd never seen Deathmatch shit in that area before. Right. So a lot of people, like, holy fuck, Jimmy Lloyd is here. You know what I mean? Like, fucking stoked. Right. Um, and every fucking match was a fucking banger. Like, we had the opening match. It was a cage match. And um, they were eating it up. The uh, The crowd was so fucking hot. The crowd was so fucking happy. And that's also a difference between, like, if you're doing a, two different deathmatch shows in Detroit every weekend, people aren't going to be like, holy fuck, a gusset plate. You know what I mean? Right. Um, so there, every fucking thing that was done was like, holy fucking shit blade tube oh my god you know what i mean yeah. there was no um everything was like brand new and that was really fun and the roster was great uh the dude running it was really fun uh the artwork for the promotion is really good which um that i think that goes a long way the merch looks cool you know exactly good point um and he seemed down to it seemed like he understood what he had a vision of what he wanted to wanted it to be Mm -hmm. which a lot of promotions do not a lot of promotion a lot of promoters are kind of just playing with their action figures you know what i mean yep and um that's fine but also and i tell a lot of these promoters i'm like if you were a fan how would you follow what's going on how much time and energy would you invest in what the product is and i mean yeah you have storylines but how do you watch it? You have to watch a show on YouTube. You have to come to the live shows. You have to keep up with a Facebook set that's never updated. Like, what? How do you keep up with the stories? Yeah. And just on my own, like with the total fucking chaos, I try to have consecutive 
it leaves characters and stories you know what i mean yep. if you follow on the instagram or you just watch our promos and shit you get an understanding of who we are and what we're doing yep um i do think i could do better with there's a lot of like okay we're gonna fight this wrestler but then you kind of never see what happens after because okay. the footage because every wrestling promotion like the footage goes who fucking knows sometimes you never even see the fucking how footage. frustrating is that not getting your footage uh it's it's more so just weird it's like what was the point of uh yeah putting this show on thank you yeah uh, i've been on shows where there was no cameras right you know, what's the point of this so the 30 40 people here can see something that they'll forget about in a couple weeks like what's the what's the point of not filming this and i've been on shows where there was no camera crew like it's insane to me it's insane to me too but it's happened more than once does there come a point where you start like if you got a buddy with you have them film the match for you luckily the guy that i uh, did my documentary has filled in just like to film the entire show before for Good. companies but at, a, at, at some point i mean because i've been doing this as you know not a super long time but long enough to be like you know fuck it you know i'm just gonna do what i got the minimal what i gotta do get the fuck out of here like this place sucks you quickly kind of know like oh my god this wrestling company this wrestling show sucks have you had just... more of that than not it sounds like um that. i've been careful to not return to places that i think suck okay good <laughs> <laughs> if a place sucks i try not to go back um what makes a place suck <sighs> okay some examples sure when i was in uh when i'm around guys like that were on the portland show mm -hmm. when i'm around guys that were in xpw they don't talk about how great they are okay uh if you're in a locker room and everyone's acting like it's fucking wrestlemania and every fucking thing they're doing is important chances are they all suck <laughs> <laughs> okay. um i mean it drives and i'm just sitting there like this is driving me fucking nuts like i've been on wrestling shows where every guy was getting paid five hundred to two thousand dollars like right. names so now i'm sitting in this locker room with these guys that don't travel more than an hour away from their homes acting like they're as big or bigger than guys in fucking aew you know what i mean like right. and i'm just sitting there like i want to go home i this is horrible like why the fuck do these people think they're so cool or like why do they think what they're doing is so important or whatever right you know so there's a lot I try to avoid situations like that because I've been in situations like that more than I'd like to uh, admit. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure. I'm sure. Yeah. And you know, that makes a good point. I got to say the two biggest names that I hit up for podcasts this week, yeah. you and another person that will be shown later this week. And you two are the ones that stay consistent, gave me answers. Here you are doing sure. your part. And it's, right. weird. it's weird. It just goes to your point, you know, like y'all are professionals, obviously. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And um, I mean, so then you got to get into it and break it down. Why are people becoming wrestlers? Why are people becoming promoters? And that's a question I can't really even answer. Like, all right, let's say you run a wrestling company, you lose money, but you keep doing it. And it's just getting worse and worse, but you don't give up what is the motivation for that i don't understand i've i've met wrestling promoters i'm friends with and i get along with but the motivation to run a wrestling show is i cannot fathom wanting to put my neck on the line like that money wise or just i mean quickly your reputation can go to shit if things go wrong you know like yeah there's a lot on the line hell i mean you got get a lawsuit if things go too wrong absolutely i mean in new york it's a little stricter as a guy that i know that his license wasn't updated or something and he got fined like fifteen fucking thousand dollars like <laughs> like why did you have to run this wrestling show in this bingo hall you know what i mean that bad yeah <laughs> i i don't i don't get it and you mentioned no stories and no way to follow the product there is a lot of that i mean and it's easy yeah. to do man it's real easy to do i've done it for two years it's not that hard right you right. edit some videos and put it out and you ask your guys mm -hmm. for promos they don't go, give you promos don't book them yeah pretty much and that's why i mean and that's why when i am roped into doing a shitty show i make sure to at least to do a promo 
uh, whether it, it makes anyone go to the show or not, it's up on my Instagram. It's there forever. I put it on the Deathmatch Elite page. You, you see that, job. okay, at least Will went to Philadelphia. Maybe it sucked, whatever. <laughs> well, we may never know, but they're going to see that promo exists. So other promoters or other fans or other wrestlers go, okay, this is someone I'd like to work with. He does do something because there's gotcha. so many guys doing nothing. You know what I mean? And also, it's a good way to keep track of what you've done. Like you said, you just cutting a promo yeah. for Philly. He's cutting a promo for Texas. Yeah. yeah, exactly. And I mean, probably, I mean, like I said, I came into wrestling. I was always a wrestling fan, but I came into it more from the entertainment uh, background than wrestling background. Mm -hmm. So the promos and the skits are always my, uh, what I thought uh, helped me stand above other people doing things i was never athletic obviously i was never <laughs> like a tough guy obviously so i doing funny skits having a a general kind of knowledge of directing and filming shit uh media shit like that's more what i came into it from mm -hmm. comedy world um and that's what i apply to uh what i'm trying to get across at least did that get you your foot in the door with xpw Absolutely. Um, it was, uh, I mean, my, it started out um, before XPW was even uh, brought up or coming back. I had Rob on my uh, radio show and we were just kind of becoming friends. And he just kind of knew I was kind of goofy and funny and did like, you know, things like DJing and like hosting little burlesque shows and shit like that and staying up comedy every now and then. And then um, what really got me in XPW was I kind of knew you know, venues in Rochester. I knew camera people. I knew right. Rob was not up to date on what wrestlers he should book. And I was very much into deathmatch wrestling. I was like, bring Schlack immediately. You know what I mean? Right like, on. um, so like, um, that was my end. And I was also just available. I mean, I was still getting fucking COVID unemployment at that point. Nice. So I didn't have a fucking job. I was just fucking hanging out, you know, <laughs> and I could just meet, rob at the store or the restaurant just hang out and be like shoot the shit and talk about wrestling and pitch ideas back and forth and then and if you've seen old xbw shows there's a lot of skits it, oh bro i love the shows with where they didn't have venues and it was all skits holy shit. yeah yep and that's um so as soon as we started doing skits i was like obviously his first character so it was him and then he had me and then um I mean, luckily the fans thought it was funny what we were doing and interesting. And then, you know, then, you know, Schlack would come in and for like a weekend or whatever, we'd film some shit or we'd go wherever and film some shit. And kind of as soon as I got a little bit of my toes into the water, like, oh, I can do skits. I can do funny shit. And I just ran with it because I was having so I, I mean, that's definitely one of the things I miss about XPW was just like weekly skits and filming skits and stories. I mean, it was so, um, it was a lot of fun to be able to do that. Um, I didn't really like, I mean, Rob was definitely trying to, uh, towards the end, he was trying to make me a gay character for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> and, I, and I'm not gay, nothing against the gays. But um, but if, he, he, if you would have went gay, you would have been kissing dudes and it, you know. It yeah, was, it was. well, he, the la I think one of the last skits we did was, <laughs> I, I would, there was a closet at the store Okay. where I keep like my wrestling toys and I had bottles of poppers and shit. And my job was to organize the t-shirts and shit, but I'd just be in there like sniffing poppers and like playing with my toys and shit. Right. So I think one of the last ones, he like bangs the door down. It's like, he's like, you need to come out of the closet. And I'm like, I like it in the closet. The closet's fine. The closet's it's cool in the closet. He's like, you got to come out of the closet. And like, that was the skit. I go, I think I know where this is going. Because he was still starting to bring up hard body in regularly. Okay. And I think he wanted me and him to be like a couple or something. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. <laughs> so that was like the week I got fired. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm like, I'm like, okay, I could, you know what? I think I saw where this was going. I didn't want to be a gay character because I was already like, um, like a step honorable character. You know what I mean? Oh, for sure. And that was funny and it was cool. But it was like, I was like closer to like Urkel, but like, you can't make Urkel gay, you know, like <laughs> Urkel's got enough fucking problems, you know, 
Nobody wants to see Urkel having gay sex. Nobody, nobody wants that. And I and it would have come down to that because y'all was doing whatever you wanted on that show anyway. And oh, I, gotta, I, I gotta tell you, that was part of the hook, man. I was like, well, let's see what XPW's up to. And oh, absolutely. Like, Hell yeah, man. Whatever's going on here, like I, that was part of the hook for me. That's what had me watching. So it worked, oh, man. Absolutely. Props to you. Absolutely, and it was a lot of fun, and I. And I mean, you know, it's saying things that I don't normally say, but the show went completely to shit the day he fired me. Okay. There were no more skits. There were no more regular episodes every week. Nope. There were, it um, it turned to just being skits of him and his wife talking. Yeah. And no offense to her. She's not, uh, you know, Ingrid Bergman. You know what I mean? She's not some actress, you know. It can, it can only go so far. Right. So it was just like him and the wife arguing. Sometimes they'd get like slack on a video call or something. Um, and I only, I didn't really keep up with the show after I left, obviously, but that's what I heard. I think they might have done a skit or two with, uh, I think someone said Dr. Redacted and his girlfriend or something, but uh, none of it went anywhere. You know what I mean? And um, so I, I do believe that I'll take some, not some of the credit, but I think that me being gone definitely hurt the company. Um, a lot changed when I left I for the worse. I, I feel it. And it, I mean, it's the proof's in the pudding. You can watch and see. Now, were you producing and editing and uh, all these skits? Nope. I was just kind of uh, writing and acting in I and filming you. some of it. Um, the editor is Tom Byron. Uh, the famous adult male for, uh, film star, Tom Byron. Okay. He was the editor, and he would film most of it if it was in the office. But if you see me, like, out on, like, location, that was me, or, like, getting me, getting a friend to film it or whatever. Um, but it was all, like, t like, Rob would kind of be, like, we need to, like, get this over. And then I would, like, do something. I would add something silly to it. Or if I was going on, like, a vacation or, like, going to a location – I'd be like, well, I can add that into something for the XBW show. Um, and that was kind of, because he was really kind of controlling. He wouldn't like when I would like go on a vacation. So I'd be like, well, if I go to Philly, I can run up and down the Rocky stairs. And he'd be like, all right, yeah, that'd be funny. <laughs> Why like, weren't you allowed to go on a vacation? It was a very uh, demanding job. <laughs> <laughs> it was a very demanding job. And like, it was honestly giving me like a fucking nervous breakdown working for XBW. Um Oh, it was like a it was like a twenty four hour a day job. I, this is the most relatable moment ever on the podcast. Yes, it's it's constant when you're in the thick of things, yeah. ain't it? Oh yeah, because um, I because guys would message me. Okay. With their, if their flight was fucked up, oh, guys okay. would message me. Guys would message me if you know they didn't know where when they were supposed to be somewhere. Okay. I was the talent. I was talent relations Yikes. for everybody there, okay. and um people were scared to talk to Rob because it was Rob Black. Right. So they all had my number and I was just like, let me see what I could do. And I was all really trying to help everybody. Uh, I was in charge of getting everybody's promos for the TV show. I was in charge of, I took it upon myself to be in charge of uh, handling complaints. Oh, no. <laughs> um, handling complaints. I was part, I was the complaint department guy. Can you give me I an was... example of a complaint? Just um, we'd promise people, you'd be like, oh, you get front row, you get a t-shirt. They get there, they go, well, I'm a large man. They didn't have a shirt my size. Okay. Okay. Listen off your responsibilities, though. This is nuts. I'm sorry. I want to hear those. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, hate getting all the weapons, the days of the shows. I, that was, I was responsible for that. Okay. Um, obviously coordinating people to pick people up from the airports and myself having to do that, um, cleaning up after these fucking shit shows. I was responsible for that. I couldn't leave until the place was clean or whatever, you know. Um, and just just handling all the, the drama with the things that Rob did and pissing people off on the internet. And it was a lot of uh stress it was a lot it was in and being around rob was not easy he's a very volatile dude right he's, he's um very hard to get along with and i and i'm a punk so i mean i never dealt with someone like that before right. i never dealt with someone just that just screams and yells and freaks the fuck out and so, 
So here you are with this dream job. You're living the dream. It's XPW. How yeah. hard was that to say, fuck it, I quit? I got fired. <laughs> you got fired? Okay. Oh, yeah. You did say you said earlier fired. you got fired. My yeah, I got fired. fired. Um, I was, um, it was the first New Jersey show. Okay. And um, I was already just like about to have a nervous breakdown. Okay. I was at my fucking wit's end. Um, and Rob and I were bickering about... I had to drive a U-Haul full of panes of glass and, and weapons and doors and shit from Rochester to New Jersey. Okay. And, he, and I hadn't, and his, I worked at the store. He had a store that sold uh, adults, adult goods, dildos and shit, and he sold weed. Okay. And um, so I only worked, that was my only income. My only income was him. Okay. So if I had a show on the weekend... Now my income is cut in half because now I'm not working at the store. And so I'm going broke pretty much. Okay. And um, I had to drive this U-Haul truck to New Jersey. And I was like, dude, I don't have enough money for gas to get this truck to New Jersey. You got to give me cash. Mm -hmm. And he never gave me the cash. He's like, I'll PayPal you on the way. But my bank account was connected to my my girlfriend was using my bank account for her Ubers. So he paid me like 80 bucks for the gas, but then immediately like my card was like negative 40 bucks. Okay. So just like, all this fucked up. And I was like, dude, just listen to me. Give me cash. If you put it through the bank, everything's going to get fucked up. And he didn't fucking listen. So we're fighting over like 40, 50 bucks, like for like the, for like a week. You know what I mean? Okay. <laughs> so we just like, we're at each other's throats and he we get to new jersey and i'm just like fucking I, i'm about to have like a fucking nervous breakdown i'm ha i'm like a wreck and i'm miserable and i'm trying to get everything together that i have to do and i'm just like everything just ugh, everything was just like killing me you know right and um and basically he kind of like threw me into a pool not knowing how to swim and then kind of laughed at me drowning you know what i mean that's how oh, i felt man so many things yeah go ahead. yeah because i was not the things that i and i made a list and i have it somewhere the things i was good at doing i was good at you know writing this writing the 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 tv show uh doing talent relations for the guys um uh clean up cleaning up and buying the weapons and shit like that the things that I was not good at was like you know money things and plain things and I knew where my what I was good at, what I was not good at. Okay. And he just wanted me to be, you know, good at everything. Right. So, and at the, at the same time, I'm going broke. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm not. Not profiting I mean, off the, all this work. Yeah, I'm actively losing money and, like, my, I'm, like, losing my fucking mind. Yeah. So, after the New Jersey show, there weren't enough hotel rooms for all the wrestlers. And me and him got into a fight, and that's when he fired me. Because I was like, dude, I am doing my job. There's not enough hotel rooms for everyone. I'm not telling people to sleep on the floor or drive home. You know what I mean? Like, right. So that was what the end of, end of it was. And then he fired me, and then that was it. And I was like, kind of like, thank God <laughs> this is over. What do I do next? Do I want to keep doing wrestling? And luckily... Uh, there's a wrestling school opening up around the corner from my house at this time, Ground Zero, okay. and it was all buddies of mine, guys that I've known for 15, 20 years running it, and I was like, well, I'm going to go hang out over there, learn, you know, bumps not to become a wrestler, but learn to be, if I'm going to be a wrestling manager, I want to be the best wrestling manager I can be, Hell yeah. and they uh, were very cool teaching me shit, and um, then the hardcore started just uh i started just going but wherever he went and then uh, a few months later i was like the dream always was to start a punk faction nice and rob if I, if that had started an xpw it rob would have ruined it he okay. would have made us like job squad fucking guys you know what i mean right on so it's good that it didn't happen there right on uh, i was always trying to get chuck stein to xpw but it, the scheduling never worked out which is probably a blessing in disguise because he might have been like, oh, Will's punk shitty dude. We'll drop him out, you know? Right. So 
being on your own and now I can just do whatever I want, which is cool. And there's no, I don't work for any company. I don't work in any city. I don't work in any area. And I have guys all over the country. So when I want to go to Texas, I got guys to work with. You know what I mean? I love it. Yeah. So, I mean, what I think what I did, and, and, and it is a little bit of smoke and mirrors because it's like I'll film a promo of a guy in Texas on a phone and edit it with me, and it looks like it's one yep. conglomerate thing. But, I mean, I didn't meet those Texas guys till I fucking met them, and we had been in promos and skits together before. So it's a little bit of smoke and mirrors making – total fucking chaos seem like a much bigger thing than it is Good. but Perception maybe it is I don't, maybe it is a bigger thing than it is you know i don't know you're on the fucking podcast for a fucking reason total fucking chaos man. Yeah. Like I said, it, <laughs> it is perceptions reality wrestling smoke and mirrors so smoke and absolutely. mirrors all fucking day and build your fucking brand man absolutely and um one of the biggest um and i told him this when i met him one of my biggest inspirations in wrestling um, the wrestler that I think I'm probably the most inspired by is Dan Housen. Okay. And it's because he became famous during COVID when there was no shows. Yep. He just was weird on the internet. Mm -hmm. And when shows came back, he was in Ring of Honor and he was in fucking AEW like that month. Yep. Because he was so over just being a character on the internet. Yep. And to me, that was like the most inspirational fucking thing ever because that just proves you can put something together on the internet and not have to go not have to get booked on shows not have to travel not have to do all this shit that you thought you had to do before in wrestling to get over right that you don't have to do that anymore you can just be weird on the internet and have an internet presence and that's how people notice you and that's eventually how you get the gigs or jobs that you want if you're good if you're good. Sure. But I mean, so many guys don't do anything. Yeah. It, yeah. They're exactly right. So many right. guys don't do anything. And that's crazy to me because, like, you put all this work in, you get beat up, you travel all these hours, and there's no way for people to follow your journey, no way to people to follow your story, no way for people to get invested in your character because maybe there is no character. There's so many guys that are just a guy with a beard who looks like every other fucking guy with a beard. You know what I mean? Like, why are people going to give a shit about you? Well, what do you say to those wrestlers, mostly old heads, mostly the old guard? What do you say to the ones that say the Dan Housens and folks like yourself, you're meme wrestlers. You got over because of the internet. You're getting the bookings because of the internet. You're meme wrestlers. What do you have to say to that? Fuck yeah. Hell yeah, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck yeah, boy. dude. It's professional wrestling, man. Like, you know... <laughs> Hacksaw Jim Duggan wasn't Hacksaw Jim Duggan because he did cool moves. You know what I mean? <laughs> he went, oh, and carried a flag and had a fucking two by four that he never hit anybody with. Yeah, and it fucking worked, by God. And it worked, you know. Fucking yeah. bushwhackers, what the fuck did they do? They lick children's faces. Yeah, yeah. yeah but before that, they were doing crazy barbed wire matches. You got to give them that. They, I, they were I've doing seen that shit. Yeah. I, have seen, I have seen that shit. But it's not, Maybe I think, whatever gets over, whatever. Him whatever gets over gets over you know like um as long as you're a cool guy about it <laughs> <laughs> well that's a good point that brings up a good question i had for you. you 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 have this punk rock spirit this rebellious spirit but in wrestling you kind of got to get along sometimes you got to kiss a little ass where do you draw the line like how do you get along in wrestling but still keep that punk rock but rebellious spirit I, um, I've walked away from any situation where I probably would have to kiss somebody's ass that I don't agree with. Yeah. Um, I've been very lucky that, um, most of the places I've regularly worked, mm -hmm. the guys have all been pretty cool. Good. Um, every, there was a company I was, I mentioned earlier before the show and the guy was just kind of Trumpy and just kind of right wingy, just based on shit he would share on Facebook. And I go, you know what? I'm not, I don't need this gig that bad that i want to be around people like this okay um so i mean at the end of the day i don't think i have uh succumbed any uh pressure to change anything for a gig because i don't think any gig has been so good that i had to like do something against my morals for the most part oh yeah and you're free um, to do whatever you want to do once you get out there exactly um I mean, the weirdest I've ever felt in wrestling business was like 
things guys at uh, XBW would bring in, being like guys that like super canceled dudes and shit, where people are like, "Yo, why are you booking these like Nazis or fucking what Republicans or whatever?" Uh -huh. That was kind of the most like, "Well, I, I am a punk guy. Why am I working for a company that the owner has like a conservative talk show radio?" You know what I mean? Right. Like that was probably the most. But it was always very much like. I'm still a punk guy. Obviously, my ideals are not going to be that, but still, I was working for a company that was not, was proud of being not PC. Right. So, and I, I don't intend to do that ever again. Well, hey, that, yeah, I get it. I get it. And, yeah. and, man, it was XPW. Like, I get it. Yeah. And, and I get where the, what they were trying to do, I believe, but. We see where they are now, and you're out here up and down the road kicking ass. I saw you in a trauma movie. How the hell? What the? You're just everywhere. How was the trauma experience? Yeah. Um. Well. Uh. How the fuck did that happen? <laughs> I, somebody told me to be somewhere at a certain time. And they told me I had to get fifty dollars. <laughs> Who the fuck told me to go though? What a life, man. How did I get there? <laughs> How, why was I there? It was like, it was filmed. When the fuck was this? <laughs> it was a while ago. Okay. Maybe it was like last spring. Maybe. <laughs> I think it was like last spring. And uh, they were like, you come to this place, we'll give you $50. And you're comfortable with like getting shot. And I was like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, of course. Of course I am. And I got there and I was like, whoa, this is like a big movie set. Uh -huh. I didn't know what I was getting myself into. I was like, oh, wow. It's a lot of cameras and a lot of, you know, makeup people and all kinds of, like, you know, guys handing you prop guns and shit and, like, professional people, you know. Right. And then I went in there and I, I, I had, and because I'm, a, I have wrestling training, I could take, take, like, a good bump, you know. Uh -huh. So I got shot and I, like, flew back and, like, kicked my fucking feet up in the air. And they're like, oh, wow, that's, we didn't have to do all that. And I was like, no, no, I, I'll do all that. I want it to look good, you know? Yeah. And they made me do it, like, I feel like I did it, like, ten times. Oh, okay. They took advantage. Right. I feel like I did it, like, ten times. And then uh, I was like, all right, well, I guess I'm dead now. Can I go? And they go, yeah, that's fine. <laughs> You're dead. <laughs> go. I go, all right. And I walked out, and a woman handed me a $50 bill, which is odd, a $50 bill. Nice. And I said, all right, thank you. And I got in my car, and I left. And I never heard anything else about it. <laughs> and then, and then, the, then my buddy was like, "Oh, are the, the premiere for your movie is like next week." I go, "They didn't tell me. I wasn't invited." Uh -huh. And then I, I, I go, well, "Let me see the, the flyer." And I go, "Oh yeah, that's the movie I'm in. I better go." Uh -huh. So I went, and there was no one else from the movie there, except for the director. <laughs> okay. And I sat there and, and I didn't want to invite my friends because I didn't know if it was going to suck or not. You know what I mean? Right. So I just went by myself. <laughs> <laughs> was it good? Yeah, it was actually really good. <laughs> yeah, it was really good, actually. So I went there by myself. And it was at a, like a a bar with like craft cocktails. You know what I mean? <laughs> okay. Like a place where, they, place where they have to like muddle oranges and shit. Okay. And, oh. um... I uh, went up to the bar, and I was like, can I, and they hand you a menu. When they hand you a menu, you know you're in trouble. Oh, no. They hand me a menu, and um, I ordered a drink that the guy had a crack an egg into. Okay. And it, he, it was, he is like a, I don't know what the fuck it was. It was, it was okay. And it, and it was like $14 or whatever. Nice. That's fine. And that's okay. It's all right. Yeah, right. He, he put a lot of work into it. <laughs> He put a lot of work into this drink, so I get it. It should be $14. Oh, I got you. Okay. Pack the fucking egg into it, dude. <laughs> so I I bought this drink, and I kind of just, like, sat in the corner. I didn't I didn't want to make a big deal because right. I'm wearing the exact same outfit I was in the movie. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't want it to look like I just, like, dressed like that, you know, for attention. Mm -hmm. So I kind of just sat in the corner and sipped my – and they gave it to me in a, a funny little glass, too. Like a, va like a vase. Okay. Um, so I'm just kind of in the corner sipping my vase and I'm um, watching the movie. I'm like, oh, this is pretty good. And then it gets to the part where I go, I think my scene's coming up. And I started getting really nervous. Uh -huh. I was like, I was just like, 
because if this sucks, I don't want to ever. I don't want to tell anybody about it. You know what I mean? Uh-huh. I just want to blood. I just want people to be like, "Hey, I saw a movie and you were in it." And I go, "Oh, that's weird." <laughs> uh, yeah, I guess I I was in a movie. Yeah, but then I watched it and it was actually it was good. So I was like, oh, "All right, I can Instagram this and put that up there." You know? Right, right. And they gave me an IMDb page too. Ooh, okay. Which is nice. Yeah. <laughs> Got to start somewhere yeah, by yeah, an IMDb page. That's how you know you made it, I think. I, I, more than I uh, guarantee any of the workers in West Virginia. So you're ahead of the game, sir. You're going you're gonna to get me beat up. <laughs> I'm going to get myself beat up. I'm here in West well, Virginia. You don't even know when you'll be back. What are, what are you uh, talking about? <laughs> fair, fair enough. Fair enough. You're right. You're right. A- uh, but, yeah, that was that was fun. And Lloyd Kaufman is in the movie. I didn't meet Lloyd Kaufman, but he's in the movie. You're in the same movie as Lloyd Kaufman? So. Yeah. What's yeah, the name so of the movie? It's called Special Needs Revolt, and it's about um, <laughs> it's about uh, mentally challenged people getting uh, like rounded up. As it's kind of similar to like uh, what Hitler did to the Jews, he does, he does it to the handicapped people. So then they have to fight back. Jesus. And they start a revolution, and they they uh, kill the president. Oh my oh, Spoiler! God. Spoiler! Spoiler! That they they have to get the president. I'm on Troma now, right now, to see if it's on there yet. It's I don't on. know if it's out yet. I don't know if it's out yet. Fair enough. I'll keep my oh. subscription up for a while so I can catch that bad boy. Yeah, I don't I know. I don't know. Special needs revolt. It's a really. It was actually really. It was good. It was a good movie. I I did enjoy it. I what? recommend. It. Okay, so the special needs people were they hammy or were they believable? Believable. Oh, they believe it. They're good actors. Oh my! The lead actor is a guy, a kid with Down syndrome. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah, he's great. He is really good. <laughs> so we have le- legit uh, special needs people in the role. Yeah. Okay. And then there's a guy. There's a guy in a wheelchair with the hands like this. I'll I'll quit laughing immediately. Why didn't you tell me that while I was laughing? Now I'm an asshole. You asshole. I'm not <laughs> well. Jeez. I'm seeing something completely different, man. When it was true, I was thinking of like the beginning of Citizen Talksy and shit. Okay. All yeah, right. yeah, yeah. But um, no, it's a good movie. I rec- It was a. I was nervous. I didn't know what to expect. You never know what to expect. You know, people make so many shitty movies. Oh man, don't they? Yeah. So I was like, I I don't know. Why would mine be good? And you ended up in a good one. So look I ended up you. in a good one. So I I got lucky for the yeah. How'd you end I kind of want to be in more. I want to be in what? How'd you end up with those tag titles? Oh, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, last winter, uh-huh. they had a Christmas wrestling show, and they had four presents in the corner of the rings up on poles. Oh. And they had all the everybody, all of everybody's out there fighting. Like okay. thirty guys are out there fighting. And I was one of the guys out there fighting, you see. And then I, I uh, just saw my opportunity. Mm-hmm. No one was paying attention. I r- ran up and I grabbed the present. Okay. And then, and inside the president, inside the president was a number one contendership for a tag team belt. Nice. And um, around that time, Kyle got banned from the United States. Mm. And so I was like, well, I need to find a partner for a hardcore. And then uh, months and months go by, <laughs> and I just kind of forgot about it, I guess. And then uh, they go, this is the last, it expires at the end of the year. This is the last show. Oh, shit. You have to cash it in. Well, fair. I, 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 all my guys, they can't make it, right? Mm-hmm. So I have to go out there all by myself and fight the tag team champions. And, uh, you know, I'm not some great wrestler. I'm not some big tough guy. But I had to go out there and I had to fight two men. It's the way you made it look. Contractually, contractually obligated to fight two men. Okay, okay, fair. So I go out there and I go, I go, uh, I couldn't find a partner. Can we put this off? And they go, no, you have to, there's no, you can't get out of it. Mm. Luckily, luckily. My buddy, Chris Worthless, not a total fucking chaos member, but a good friend of mine. He's like six foot seven, big guy. Yeah, I've seen. Luckily, he came in at the last minute to save me. 
And that's how we won the tag team belts. Nice. Yeah. Happy yeah. ending. Happy ending, yeah. Last show of the year, so that's how you end that season, by God. You walk out champion. Exactly. Happy ending. Yep. It worked wow. out. It's nice to have, it's nice. It was a nice feeling. I didn't expect that. And then and then the next week I had another tag team opportunity in Canada, but we did not win. But we tried. But still it's a tag match in Canada, so And it's a, it was for the, the belts. It was for the belts, okay. It was for the belts. We just didn't win. But you know, you can't win them all. You're coming up the ranks, my man. You were in the exactly. final ten minutes, Will. On the final ten minutes, I give everybody a chance if there's anything you want to get off the chest. If you got any crazy right. stories, whatever you want to put out there, upcoming matches, merch, socials, whatever you want to pimp, the platform's yours, good sir. Thank you, buddy. Uh, we're doing ICW is going to be in uh, Detroit. I'm coming out with Chuck to fight Hoodfoot. Not, ooh. And uh, this Thursday in Pittsburgh, Brandon is fighting Hoodfoot. Okay. So I think we might have uh, beef with this Hoodfoot guy. I don't know. By the time it's all said and done, yeah. We'll see how Thursday goes. I, I don't know. I don't see. Uh, I don't see how this could end well. He's a big man. Big He's a very man, big dude. man. He's a very tough man. Brandon is a very tough man, but not a very big man. Well, mm. that's why I'm coming to help him. Okay. So. Makes it almost fair. Uh, wrestling is like that. Sometimes you got to understand. Wrestling sometimes is just that way. Um. And as a manager, it's my job. What is my job? To make sure my guys win. That's why I'm there. Right. Um, very rarely is the manager perceived as a good guy. I've mm -hmm. found. I don't know why that is, but people like think managers are known for uh, cheating. Mm -hmm. well, which I don't. Be the brain, man. I don't know how that reputation started, but that's the reputation managers have. Well, for sure. So. Might as well, we'll, see what it. we'll see what happens. You know what I mean? I, I don't know. We'll see what happens. I uh, don't plan on cheating Thursday against Hoodfoot. Well, not planning on doing that. Do what you got to do. But I don't plan on losing either. Uh -huh. So take that into consideration. Um, <laughs> we're going back to Portland in January, which I'm looking forward to. Sweet. Um, what else? Uh, Portland in January. I got a I got a different tag team match in a different company. Me and Chris versus uh, uh, Dick Justice and this kid Scoop. Okay. He's a local. He's a local kid who's he just doesn't know his place. Uh -huh. He's one of the students, but he just I don't know. He just gets in the way. He keeps fucking with my shit. So we're we're gonna teach him a lesson. Dick uh -huh. Justice was uh, in TNA. Maybe you remember him or not. I don't know, but uh, he's kind of a it's kind of a big match, but. Uh, Nice. He, uh, I plan on winning that one too. I don't, I don't plan on losing any of these matches. I uh, know. So, uh, yeah, tag team, tag team match, and two. So that's three tag team matches in like a month and a half that I had to compete in. Okay. Which is strange. You're becoming a tag expert. Well, you know, maybe I am becoming a tag expert. I dig it. Yeah, maybe I am becoming a yeah. I mean, you know, I mean, you're one half of a tag team. Ch you're a tag champ, for God's sake. So I you am must a be tag an expert if you're a champ. They don't just that, and you know, not everybody is a. Yeah, you're right. No, you're right. You're absolutely right. Yeah, you're absolutely right. With that. Okay. All right. Yeah. <laughs> I can see that. All right. Okay. You're get, I mean, oh. and then after you won that, you got a shot at other tag titles internationally. Internationally. And yeah. Yep. Yeah, so it makes sense. I mean, the promoters see it, so the fans got to see it. They have to deal with it no matter what. It doesn't matter how they feel. A part of the wrestling business is you really don't need to care how the fans feel. They're not gonna they're not gonna be there for you whether you win or lose. That's true. They're just there that they they okay, they're there when you win. They're not there when you lose. Okay. So the fans, I mean, take them or leave them. You know what I mean? I, the fans ugh. I mean, sure, someone has to pay the bills. I get that. Well, but, sometimes they'd be buying some merch. If, you, if you're nice and have cool merch, they'll buy your merch. All right. No, you're right. You're Just right. Just a point. Just a tip, you know. You're right. You're right. You're right. You're right. But, you know, sometimes, you know, you get out there and they're just heckling you and booing you and they don't they don't give a fuck. 
Well, speaking of which, we do miss you and yours at Negative Outlook. I hope you come back sometime soon. More I want to bring I want to bring uh, Kyle and uh, Chuck down there. That'd be fun. That's the that's put that put that little uh, seed out there. You know what? Since we mentioned it, I'll I'll go and break some news now. Maybe I'll have Mr. Chris from himself on the podcast real soon. Maybe maybe I'll run it by him then. That'd be fun. Just right there, put him on the spot. Yeah, say what do you think of what do you think of total fucking chaos? Okay, yeah, I'll I'll put him on the spot. I like that. (laughs) And he turns off his phone. (laughs) He deletes he deletes the messenger app. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, crap. I appreciate the hell out of you, Will. Another fun episode, my man. That was fun. Thank you so much. Yes, sir. I'll ask you to hang on the line. You have any final words for the fans and the anybody watching? Oh, yeah, that fucking uh, Jimmy Chondo guy that fucking broke Hardcore's arm. Yeah. Hey, we're, we're coming for you, motherfucker. Damn. Yeah, Damn. no, you don't, yeah, you, you know, you know, Hardcore was there by himself, but Hardcore's in a fucking gang. Maybe we'll have Hardcore on the podcast next week. There, that's there's another cool story. That poor guy sitting in his house scratching at, at his cast. Poor yeah, guy. Yeah, kind of fucked up. Poor fucking kid. Yeah, it's terrible. He's a nice um, guy. Good guy. He's a nice, good guy. Huh? Fucking that loser in New Jersey broke his goddamn arm. Nobody deserves a broken arm. Even if you're an asshole, you don't deserve a broken arm. I should. I think this Jimmy Chondo guy deserves a broken arm. Damn. You heard it here. You heard it here on the road. Here. Jimmy Chondo deserves a broken arm. Deserves a fucking broken arm. He's going to get that fucking... All right, that's all right. I'm getting upset now. All right. Arm for an arm. We's doing good. You were happy. I'm sorry. To the mm. listeners, this is why we do it. Somebody busting their ass, giving to the business, reaping the rewards, going out there, living his dreams. So go out there, live your dreams. Don't take no shit from nobody. Treat each other with kindness and respect. Enjoy the spooky season. We're dropping bomb after bomb. I promise you. Stay tuned. The Outsider, Will Carroll, my man. I appreciate you. We're out of here.